My name is Luke Jerram and I'm an artist and this is my studio and I'll, I'll take you around. This is the larger sort of warehouse space where I'm storing artworks and testing artworks and, and building artworks as well. With over 100 exhibitions each year, we're, we're continually touring maybe 20 different artworks. I've had this space for about two years now. So before I was making do with, with that uh, smaller office. And then occasionally I'd hire out a space to test things out. This is kind of clean space. Prototypes and sort of residue of, of bits of projects. So that's the FTSE 100. So we took the data and then it's kind of crashed. And then we've sort of rotated that data. This is a, a, going to be a sculpture of the sun about 10 meters across that will float on the water. So that's a prototype for that. This is my street piano project. They put 60 pianos across New York and all the pianos are decorated by local artists. This is the giant water slide I installed in, in Bristol. 60,000 people turned up on the day. It's a lot of fun. Right, that's still on, just about. The first breath installation is going to be located right on the riverfront uh, in front of Factory International. And so it should act as a, a kind of beacon. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it reflects both in the building, but also that tower of light and how it reflects in the water as well and in the surrounding architecture. I'm interested in a sense of scale. So what does it feel like to be standing next to a giant moon that's half a million times smaller than it should be? Or what does it feel like to be standing next to a, a virus that's a million times larger? How does it feel to be standing next to a column of light that connects the, the ground to the sky? I'm really interested in, in those sort of experiences. Checklist, they've got a moon checklist. When a moon comes back from a touring partner, we've got various sort of checklists. We've got to make sure that it's clean and dry, that electrics are still working, that the quality is, is still in place, and that it's all okay, really. You know, we've had a, a moon that came back from America with little holes in it where someone had decided to try to shoot it, like it was going to explode dramatically. All these weird, unexpected things happen when the artworks come back. And what I try to do with a lot of the artworks I make is, is to create artworks that have multiple doors of entry so that you know a, an academic in the arts might appreciate it in one way but a, a four-year-old might appreciate it in another way and also an artwork that can be presented in different contexts is also quite useful. The idea for First Breath came sort of from the birth of my daughter. It's an extraordinary moment when your child is born and they take that first breath and what's amazing about it is right now in Manchester, there may be sort of 15 people having that profound experience all at the same time. And so First Breath is an idea of sort of connecting that invisible community of people going through the same thing at the same time by creating this massive column of light that will be pulsing and connecting the ground with the sky. It's taken 16 years to sort of finally realise this art project. Um, and the timing has worked out really well because LED technology is so much brighter and better now. So we're able to create this beautiful tower of light with lights that you can literally plug into the wall. What we've designed is a sort of a set of concentric rings that allow people to sort of go into the space and navigate around it and be able to look up from it almost inside that column. And that would be really exciting. It's almost like a kind of labyrinth or uh, uh, some sort of maze that you might find in an old cathedral. We had a project called the Sky Orchestra where we play music from hot air balloons to affect people's dreams in the early morning. And we tried to fly in Birmingham with the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra actually in the balloons. And it was far too windy. So we found 15 pianos and we installed them across the city. Um, and the Play Me I'm Yours street piano project has been far more successful than the Sky Orchestra ever was. So often, yeah, ideas will, will come about through adversity. One of the things I, I often say to, to younger artists is if you are, are off, offered a, a commission at the beginning of your career, it's good to try and over deliver on that. So I think my my first commission was for like 500 quid and I made a really nice artwork with that. Um, 
and sort of over delivered on it and took some photographs of it. And of course, and then the second commission was for like a thousand pounds. And I made a good go of that as well. And gradually over the years, you can be trusted to spend other people's money wisely. And it becomes easier to get the commissions because you've built a portfolio. You've got that sort of background and history behind you. And I think that's what you're doing at the beginning of your career is building a heritage of trust so that people will trust you to deliver or over deliver on a commission. A lot of the artworks I make are very different from one another. And what that meant that it's been quite difficult, I think, to establish my name, I suppose, as an artist. But at the same time, it's been really useful because I can kind of weave and dodge and do all sorts of different types of artwork. And it's also meant that it's kept my life and my practice really interesting. It's continually evolving. I'm testing new ideas out all the time. And so, um, and they're often made in collaboration with people. So I'm, I'm collaborating with hot air balloon manufacturers, with composers, with glass blowers, with oil engineers, you know, anything's possible through collaboration. There, there are certain strands of my practice that, that combine engineering with science and then other parts of my practice that are quite playful, I suppose, that involve public participation and thinking about how we use cities. So there's, there are these sort of parallel narratives within my practice that are developing and connecting to one another over time. So there's, there's a whole strand of artwork that relates to my use of light. So there's various installations that use light. So I'm really excited to see First Breath and I'm hoping that will also inspire other artworks in the future.